My name's Sam Durkin. I've been a traditional painter for many years. Uh, some of my older videos uh, show me painting on canvas. Uh, today I'll be painting digitally. And now before you all rush off and run away because digital painting isn't uh, what you're into, um, I am approaching it in almost exactly the same way as I would approach a traditional painting. And I'll be teaching you how to set out and how I will go through a normal painting process, but on a digital canvas. Um, the process is almost exactly the same. Uh, the different layers um, will be appropriate to drying and then waiting and painting over them. So you should learn almost exactly the same kind of techniques as I would on a traditional canvas. In fact, I'd say in some ways, because I'm able to show you the full process uh, with the recording, because I don't have to worry about limits on the length of time I'm recording because uh, my camera only records a certain amount of time and there's a lot of gaps missed out because you know the camera didn't work for a moment or something like that um, which I'm sure infuriates a lot of my old viewers in some of my old videos because there's a lot of gaps and a lot of missing bits um, there won't be that in this I, I'm, I'm showing you the the whole process from beginning to end which um, I think is, is useful uh, to see. Right, with all that out of the way, hopefully some of you have stuck around and uh, you want to see the painting. Uh, so let's get right on with it. This is the photograph we'll be working from. It's a photograph from the New Forest. It's some deer. There's a stag here in the foreground and we've got a nice background, middle ground and foreground to work from, which uh, produces a nice structure for a painting. Obviously the stag in the foreground is going to be our main focus of, of the painting and uh, we're going to sort of sketch out how that's going to work and here as you see i've got a sketch sort of building up onto the canvas what we got is a, is a base layer of a nice darkish neutral tone that we're going to work up from um, you can just cover the canvas with with a with a single color to start with to work from and then as i'm doing here sketching out very abstract shapes of where everything is <laughs> Right, welcome back. We've done the background, the middle ground, and some of the foreground. We've left the deer sort of as, as just general shapes. We'll get on with that next. Um, at this stage, if you're doing it on a canvas, we leave it to dry because we want to go over um, this paint um, to bring the deer out nicely. And we'll sort of paint round them a little bit, uh, put more of the background in. But we're using... Um, this time to let the paint dry so you'd go away for maybe five ten minutes uh, maybe even half an hour just to let that paint get nice and dry so you can paint over to get the deer in nice and sharply or onto the onto the background and we will be going over quite a lot of the paint in the future this is sort of just general um, the way we've done this grass is to use the brush in a way to sort of upward strokes so lots of upward strokes to leave the bristles to do the grass as they go upwards um, this is a is a quick way of doing lots and lots of grass strokes because um, rather than painting every single blade of grass uh, that would take forever and wouldn't actually produce a particularly nice result unless they're right in the foreground um, we're giving a general impression of the grass by getting those kind of layers uh, of grass going upwards through the painting so as you noticed i sort of worked um, from the from the background to the foreground layering in front of each other uh, we're losing lots of different types of color so there's greens in there we will be putting a bit more blue into the next stage of the painting so let's get on with that and we'll see how we go
spoken back. So we've just put a very basic layer onto the canvas just to give us some idea of where where those deer are. We want to be very detailed. We're using quite a large brush at that stage. Um, but at this point, we once again let it dry because we want to get that, that canvas nice and dry for the next stage because we're going into some quite high level detail. Uh, we're going to be using a smaller brush. Um, so depending on the size of your canvas, uh, you're going to want to reduce your brush size probably by about half, if not slightly more. Um, don't want to go into a very tiny detail brush um, because I tend to like to use things loose and uh, aim for a brush that's maybe slightly more uncomfortably big than you're used to, but still, once again, it's a smaller brush than we were using for the background. Okay, for the next stage, I'll be using the tracing paper that's in Painter 2020. But if you're using a canvas, you can use a small projector. These are not very expensive. They're usually under £100. I think that's like $120, something like that. It's very, very useful, but they're not easy to use. For one thing, you'll need to turn off all the lights in your room, which will obviously make it impossible to see your canvas. The projection onto your canvas will obliterate your ability to see what's on there. So you have to be very careful when you're painting and generally use it just for guidelines. Once you put the guidelines in, then you go back, turn your lights back on, turn the projector off and get back into the painting. And you'll see that I use the tracing paper in exactly this way. I use it for a short period of time, turn it on, put out the basic lines and then turn it off again. Part of the reason why we painted some of the deer blue was so that when painting with the browns and the lighter shades, uh, they will show through very well. Also, the second reason is that blue is opposite to those sort of orangey browns and they will work very nicely on the canvas uh, when you're working with your paint. Uh, but obviously we having to work on a dry canvas at this stage because we don't want to mix any of the paint from the blue into our oranges. It, it will really mess up the painting quite drastically and similarly we don't want the green to come through either. Right let's get on with that and uh, we'll see how we go. This piece will take quite a while so I'm showing you quite a lot of detail. I've cut a little tiny bit out of it because you see how I work um, with, with, the, with the deer um, and there's no point in showing you every single one that I paint but I, I do show you quite a lot so you get an idea of how it's done. Okay.
Okay, that's the deer done. We now just need to finish off the grass. We're still using a fairly small brush here at this stage, but we will be moving on to a much larger one to do the larger areas of grass. If you've enjoyed this painting, really, it would be very helpful if you were to buy a print off me. There is a link in the description below. So we're just getting a little bit of extra detail in here. And uh, we're in a moment, yeah, there we go. We're moving to a large brush just to get some extra large bits of brush and, and grass into the foreground and using it in the background to create the sense of trees that are there. As we go over with a lighter brush, that just kind of simulates light coming through them. Put a bit of extra colour in, a little bit of red there in the background, just to, just to balance out against that green. We're using blue as well to do the same. very large brush then move into white just to highlight the area just to bring a bit more interest and magic into the painting and there we are we're done i really hope you've enjoyed my painting demonstration if you have give it a like uh, subscribe hit the bell icon because that tells you when i'm putting up new videos and we'll see you next time thank you very much goodbye <laughs>